And uh, hi, welcome to Rumi and says it. Good night to everybody. <laughs> um, hope you guys are well. And I'm so glad right now. It's late night showing, I'm super excited. I just wanna to say to you, if it's your first time to come across this channel, I wanna say shout out and please don't forget to subscribe and make sure that you ring the bell so that every time I'm live, you'll be notified immediately. And I also wanna send some love there to my regulars and say, hey, yo, what's up? Are you good? Let's have some chat right here. Let's talk. Let's converse. All right, Washman, he's back at Songezo Shavangu. I think for a long time, people have been complaining. Why is it Washman is not saying a word? Why isn't he send out a statement or saying something? He has been communicating uh, in readers. We have seen quite a number of tweets that we've been sending out um, over this past month or so. Welcome, welcome, Lizzie. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. As well, good to see you, man. What's up? Are you guys good? And uh, what's going on? You know, he must say something. Let's have a conversation. But hey, today he said, I can't. He eventually broke his silence. And I'm so excited to have this chat with you guys. Come on, let's talk about this. This is quite interesting. Like I've asked you that question during the day. Do you really think that out after that shame of an election, people gave up on the struggle? Um, apart from citizen coalition for change, I'm talking about people like Kasukwire. You saw how committed he was the work that he did you know prior to elections how many attorney that went fought for him in parliament no sorry not in parliament in court are uh, trying to wiggle his way into the presidential post and <laughs> with no avail it's what we're going to be discussing tonight but i wanted to remind you um you know of the the statement that uh Kosukure said because during the day we looked at jonathan moyo because they said honestly when we look at all the dilemma that's going down in the country now, as far as Songhezo Shavangu saga is concerned, we can all attest to the fact that something is brewing in the background. Apart from all that we see with our own naked eyes, something is brewing. And people are saying it's because of the illegitimacy of President Emma Solomonangagwa. But in my opinion, I think there are people who are having their own agenda. As much as we think, no, the president is so desperate for truth is majority. You also heard Muchangwa said, no, 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 we are not. We don't care about the truth is majority. Okay, but we know they do care, of course. There's no way you can say we care because he knows immediately you guys, you know why. You know why we are in this predicament. Now I'm going to ask you guys to make sure that you will like the life so we can push algorithm. It is very, very crucial for us to do so. You know what I mean? So I'm looking at Kasukura. I want to dig deep to the statement that Kasukura spoke uh, during the time that he was fighting to really, um, you know, to fight for his name to be included uh, in the presidential uh, ballot. I want to remind you on that. So we're going to have to take a listen to what Kasukire say before I even proceed. Very, very crucial for us to really look into what's going on in, in this country because, hey, <laughs> a lot is going on drama after drama, drama after drama. You know, by now I was expecting to see a lot of work being done, but you'll be extremely disappointed because we're going to also look at the corruption at Mbuzi as well uh, looking at the pan-african parliament where um, th the man has been fired we'll look into that story as well so let's take a listen to mr kasukure and what he submitted during um his um fight to be included on the ballot take a listen please Court of law. and i think you've seen the various positions uh, jurists have uh, taken with regard to this matter across uh, our country, they are uh, shocked and beyond belief what it was uh, meant to achieve. Um, and then thirdly, you have, um, well, Good to see you, everybody. this comrade has always wanted power <laughs> yeah. through hook or crook. And we are not surprised with what he's been doing. As you know, that he had to roll guns out, tankers, to dethrone Robert Mugabe. That was a coup, whether people like it or not. That was a coup. And he misled a lot of people in the process, lied to them, and many of them now are worried. Why did we do this? What was it meant to achieve? It has always been about himself. I will not shy away from this because I am standing up against a man called Emerson Nangagwa because of his behavior. You don't use the laws of the country. You don't weaponize institutions to only satisfy your narrow parochial interests. 
we are all equal. The Constitution makes it clear that every Zimbabwean is equal. There's no greater than the other. So he knows he's dirty, which we all know, and he will not stop it. Harassing some people like myself, spurious charges. He has gone to court on several occasions. As I'm speaking now, he's busy trying to cook up some evidence. Let's look for something to do with Kasukwere. Once he lands, we must jail him for three, four, five years. He even interfered in my own trial to the extent that my lawyer, then Dreadnought and Sam Kange, was removed. He called him to his office and said, Wena, if you stand and defend this one, we want to send Kasukwere to jail. And that evidence I have, incontrovertible evidence. I know what he said when he said to Jonathan, and Jonathan cannot deny that. Some gang. Now, he knows he has been fighting a personal battle. He is trying as much as possible to stop me from. I am saying I have a duty, I have a right like any other Zimbabwean to stand for an office. You don't move around and say so and so on is my enemy. He is my enemy or is my rival. No, we are all Zimbabweans. So we believe that this process of trying to disenfranchise us is one of those reasons that you try and advance in a bid to try and stay in power. But with regards to him, no, we will not be deterred. We need a change in our country. And he uh, is in the ballot box with me and others. That's why I chose just one spot. We didn't go to all the other positions. No, no. MP is no problem. Council has no problem. Yeah, nah. That is where the problem is. So, Amazon, just hang tight there. 23 August. Let the people decide. Just, just, just wait a bit. Let, let's just finish it there. If you win, I'll say, my president. If you don't, Tyson, my president. Done deal. Wow. <laughs> Did you hear that? Kasukwere made it clear. I'm not interested in other things. I just want to face my body. Because I know Kasukwere and uh, Jonathan Moyer, um, Emerson Mnangagwa, the president Emerson Mnangagwa, used to be very, very close. You know, uh, during their time in his own PF, they used to be very close. And he said, you know, one thing that I've learned is me and my bodies, uh, it doesn't matter my sister, if one of my sister wake up tomorrow and be the president of the country, he's still, she, you or she's still my sister, right? If you work with someone, you're looking at them as like you're John and you're Miss and you're Peter. So no matter what position you hold, I still look at you as John. So there's something that people don't realize yet. I know that the president, Emma Sumlangabo, is the president of the country. But because they've worked together as brothers, they knew each other, they would drink together, eat together, talk, converse, even visit one another. They still look at each other as brothers and sisters. So what is that supposed to mean? So if I have to contend with you, I'm looking at you, I'm like, no, but this, you're John. Okay, so you and Peter, we are looking, I, I, I may not be holding you in high regard because I'm like, no, man, you treat me the same way you want me to treat you. You know, and it's very clear. And I've told you, if you look at what Jonathan Moore has been doing, the question we need to ask ourselves is, what is he looking for? What is he pursuing? Because after the vile and the things that he said about the president, Emerson Mnangawa, I don't think he can even step his, his foot in Zimbabwe right now. So why is he doing what he's doing? In exchange of what? Why is he pursuing ruining Chamisa? Why does he have to hold night video talking about Nelson Chamisa? Why? Honestly, fighting so that his own PF Lacoste can carry on with what they're doing. No, sorry, is that the G40? Which one is G40? Sorry, I'm confusing the two. So the current one is it Lacoste. Okay, the current one is Lacoste. So I'm saying, is he fighting for Lacoste? Or he's fighting for G40? Because at the end of the day, there's already a faction in Zampia. We have seen the war veterans as well. Now they are bashing, um, you know, Muchangwa, they want him out. There's already a division in the war vets. Now, so what is really going on? And we have very a lot of rumors there that Terence also, because he had said that no, because now the prince is going to be, uh, you know, annihilated by Nelson Chamisa. Also, I heard um, Bila as well was uh, the Minister of Commerce was uh, fired in Chirezi. 
if we, if I can remember correctly, there were allegations that he was heard uh, saying that, uh, don't worry, President Emerson Nagagwa is going to be out soon. And that's one of the reasons why he was fired. These are similar allegations. But no, because it was written in Newsday, actually. Yeah, we spoke about that story here. And now we ask a question, what is really, what's the agenda? And now that's why I'm saying shout out to Zenzele because Zenzele was clear. Uh, he made it clear that there will be a lot going on this year, a lot of factions. And like, to, like what I did during the day, I said me watching Jonathan and Shavango destroying Zanu PF within Apple. Zanu PF doesn't see that and they're laughing. I can see they're destroying Zanu PF and I agree with him. Because honestly, if everything that's going in the country here, is it to protect President Emerson Nangagwa? Then I'm sorry to say this. This is in the caliber of all you can protect a head of state. Do you remember with the issue of FAS? People are like, whatever that happened with FAS, it wasn't really a great game. Because honestly, putting all those clothes all over the place, it was so clear. It was one thing to rig, you know, with diplomacy. Uh, like Mugabe used to rig elections, but he was very, very smart. But this time, it's all literally bare. You check and see what happened on the, was it the 27th or 26th when they called out the election results? Like during the night, in the middle of the night, like as if there was not going to be tomorrow, they just begin to speak. Our people are questioning, but why all these kind of inconsistencies that are so embarrassing? The sham of an election. You know, it was one thing if it was only Zimbabweans, you know, all of us, we, can, we know that we can play each other, but we can still, we are brothers. But when you have observers in town, you look at the EU, that is ZEC was even avoiding according to their submissions. But for the what? Why is such kind of an embarrassment, especially on the president? Because if I am the president advisor, I'm like, hey, this can't be. This cannot be, it can't represent you. Why? Why all these kind of embarrassing stuff that are being displayed in the country? We are looking at the issue of Songhezo Shavango. What a shame. Such a fiasco. Oh, by the way, today, shout out to George. Are you here? George Charabi. <laughs> if George, yes, shout out. Because today, <laughs> George said to me, I made a mistake. I told you that about two years ago. It was in 2022, right? End of 2022, there was a time that he was swearing at me. That was I, when I joined Twitter, because I was not on Twitter anyway. I was on Twitter, but I was not active. He saw one of my video, uh, and I remember he said something so ugly. He literally swore at me. And I'm like, who's this? At that time, he had a ghost account, but not with the one known as Don Zamusoro. That one was um, Tinoe Dajimi or something. And uh, I remember, I'm like, who's this? And then Neva Masulasi came to me, I'm like, it's George Haramba who's swearing at you, but be careful, this man is, he, this man, we know, be careful. So to my surprise today, again, he came after me. He was like, we made one mistake, we left you uncensored. <laughs> we should have censored you. I said, no, shut up. I said, ah, you don't do that with me. You don't censor me. Let me just do my thing. You do your thing, I do my thing, we're good here. Yeah. You know? No, we're good. We're brothers. I do my thing. I can look at what you guys are doing, and I'm going to talk about it. You do whatever you're doing, whether you're going to do it right or wrong, but we will talk about it. And if we begin to laugh and say, okay, praise God, let's move forward. So shout out, George, if you're here. Your behavior on social media or your behavior in any way, it is definitely following the president in the wrong way. It's rubbing badly. You're tarnishing him so badly. Because the way you are busy appraising this Sengezo Shavango, it's a shame. It is a shame. Because people are expecting you to really understand that this is a president of a country. Whether there is an issue of legitimacy or illegitimacy, as it stands, President Emerson Nangawa, he's the president of Zimbabwe. He's the head of state. It's the way people are dragging him into mess. I don't think that the president sat down and said, I think we need to look for a person, some, someone who can do. There are people who are busy pulling all these strings, but they are doing it so wrong. They are doing it so, so wrong. Because all that Sengezo is alleging, they're bouncing because every person is dragging. They're coming back and saying, like, hey, I don't know this man. I don't know him. Remember I said Tendebi too, we are together. Tendebi came and said, hey, I don't know this man. And you also heard him. Tendebi criticizing or bastardizing the issue of recourse. And Oshmengwe said, I'm not having it. 
He said, I've, I've had enough. You guys, you're dragging me. I've had enough. Because there were allegations today that he's going to be appointed as the president of this other triple C that Sengezo is claiming to be part of, to be the SG. Where he's claiming that he's firing people. He was saying that Washington Mume is going to be the president of that triple C. And Washington Mume rubbishes the appointment claims. So one of the MG City founding members, so this is a uh, tech back reporting. And former President Mungen Changres, Vice President Professor Osman Nguye has rubbished claims that he has been appointed the new citizen coalition for change triple C interim president by controversial Secretary Sangezo uh, Shalangu, who has been on a rampage recalling rightfully elected members. Rumor had it that Nguye has been elected the new leader of the Shalangu faction, replacing the charismatic Nelson Chamisa. However, Nguye has professed ignorance over the de development and rubbish the claims. This is all rubbish. Even if I was a lunatic, I wouldn't agree to be the acting president, saying the fuming Nguye. So these are his words. This is all rubbish. Even if I was a lunatic, I wouldn't agree to be acting president, said the fuming um, Nguye. He, however, too, took a swipe at the media for being gullible and failing to, uh, to ascertain uh, facts before putting pen to paper. I've seen the posts and the stories all over. I wonder why the media go on to publish such stories without verifying whether what they would have gotten is true or false. I expect the media to be doing better by now, he added. Nguye is one of the founding members of the MG City that was led by Changrai and was vice president together with Tendai BT. So he rubbished Songhez Shalangu. Again, why is this man playing with our time? Why is this man even getting this attraction? Why are we rolling a red carpet for Mesa Sengezo Shamango? Why? Why are we humiliating our source as a nation to entertain such kind of a fakir? Why are we entertaining this nonsense? That's the question that we need to ask. I've said to people, it's time to bubbles for us to introspect. Under normal circumstances, no one, this was not going to last in, even to see a light of day. This crap. Sengezo Shamangusi drama was not going to see the light of day under normal circumstances. But honestly, to wake up and all be dragged in this mess, left, right, and this man is just dragging people. People voted, invested money, invested resources, emotions, time, commitment. And someone will just wake up and say, no, <laughs> I'm going to remove you. This, you ask yourself, sir, who are you? Where are you from? I can remove you. And now people say we are watching the courts. So Miss Samalava as well, the chief justice, who was claiming that uh, most of the judges were being intimidated by citizens every time they were, be, they were tackling any political matter. I don't think, honestly, I wish, I could, I wish they were, they, there was that opportunity to speak to the chief justice or the judges. There's a difference between attack a judge and actually questioning some of the things that's going on in the country. There's a huge difference. Attacking someone as a person is one thing. But questioning someone's work is another. Because we can separate the two. A person can change if they want to. A behavior, they can change. So I don't think they understand what's going on with citizens. Citizens are saying, how on earth did this brother get so much traction? Where is Sengezo, you know, get so much powers from? An individual, you know, you know what's called circumstantial evidence. <laughs> I don't, I'm not an attorney, but I know there's something called circumstantial evidence. Is when you look at a situation, I can't just wake up here and say, okay, I also own this company. They will look and say, where do you work? Show us the work that you've done. They look at so many things to prove. Would this man, that even citizen coalition for change is saying, we don't know him. But the man seems to be so powerful. He went on on a rampage to recall another 23 members of parliament for citizen coalition, which includes Osalo Sizima and um, Amos Chibaya. What was interesting is there's a video that is circulating where people in Manikaland, I forgot that name, in Manikaland, were literally uh, beast campaigning 
But they said Pasi na Ostalosi. They also say Pasi na Chibaya. We are talking about people in Manikaland and Chibaya is in Gweru, right? And Ostalosi is in Mulawayo. How can you mix the two? People in Manikaland are bastardizing Amos and also uh, Ostalos. And people are asking questions, who are these people? Why are they bees attacking these two guys? And, the, and then we saw them being recalled the following day. That was yesterday. By who? <laughs> Sengezo Shavango. I think I just need to wake up in the morning and start recalling people. You know, start recalling people. The question is, where is he getting the powers? And he does that with no shame. But Tuma said a statement that is quite powerful. He said, consequences of grabbing power by Mr. Mnangabu are a huge, disastrous, and painful. But I am Let him continue exposing Mudenda, the wheel of hell, fraud sign, and how badly Mnangabu has crippled the judiciary process in Zimbabwe. Hande <laughs> Tiwone. These are some of the comments that were dropped on Twitter. And Gaza said it's a hell of a last term. Cholera, inflation, high taxes. Zimbabweans can't wait for a life without Dambuzo. These are comments on Twitter. Formuzo said, you guys are in a full circus. Let me guess your response, Zanpf. Kenneth said, Izozana Shavangu tones my name is ZBC. We are no longer listening to those skits. It's a shame for any government to think that they will ever stop our change. Let him recall all triple C MPs. Him and his enablers are soon going to be irrelevant in his Zimbabwean politics. And Michael said, I told people in 2017 that Mugabe was better than ED. This guy doesn't even care about others. Mishek said, there is a high court judgment bearing Shavanko from recalling anyone. I know he is established. Who is he? I also remember that there was actually a judgment, you know, blocking him to further make recalls. But no, the dude is to proceed with making recalls. <laughs> you know, he has no regard of people's feelings at all. No respect of the elders. And this is what flabbergasts me about Zimbabwe. is the lack of humanity. The, this level of selfishness is so deep and it's thick. You should think about your brothers and think about your sisters, the elders. Young people are treating old people like kids. You know, they talk anyhow. Treating them like, like nothing. It's, it's unbelievable. People loot and with impunity. And they can actually flaunt in front of you. And that moved me to a store of Chivayo. Is that Chivayo? He's flaunting cars day in, day out. He did it two days ago. There's calling the people suffering there, but the dude is busy flaunting cars that he has bought at for church members. It's like Zimbabwe, I can't really want a motor. I can't really want a motor. It's always a car. Like, I'm so sick and tired. Like, a car where there are no roads. Sickening. It's sickening. Like, I can't really want a motor. You know, that poverty mentality is, oh, I want a motor. I got a motor. Ooh, you know, oh, my God. You know, poverty mentality. A car is not an asset. But hospital are dilapidating. So people are asking a question. And some celebrities, and there was Madame Boss, if I'm not mistaken, and another guy on Twitter, they were, he, people went on a field day on him. You are celebrating Wikno Shiva, who has looted money that was supposed to fix electricity in the country. And I heard that recently was given another tender before he even fulfilled the one that he had before. And the dude is just importing cars in the country. Mm -hmm. He speaks so arrogantly, disrespectfully to the elders. And people asking questions, how did he buy cars? And be flaunting, and I'm giving poor cars. But there are people who are dying with cholera in, in, in Chirezi. We saw people that were literally under trees, you know, being treated, heartbreaking scenes. Yeah. If you wanna give, then take the money to those that are in need. A car is not an asset, it is a liability. I wouldn't drive a car, my roads, a car, and my comba, my comba. Even the tires won't even stay at all. Quite very sad. Really, 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 really sad. All right, so Charumbira has been booted out of Pan African uh, Parliament. And you know the allegations of sexual um, you know, <laughs> harassment? He has been booted out. He's no longer the president of Pan African Parliament. 
And uh, please, guys, shout out. And I'm going to say this for those that have relatives in the rural. I'm asking and I'm begging you to speak to your family members. So now the laws have changed in Zimbabwe now. Complicity in sexual crimes. For the avoidance of doubt, it is declared that any person who being the owner of occupier of any premises knowingly permits another person on the premises to commit rape, aggravated, indecent assault, indecent assault, sexual intercourse, or performing any indecent act with a young person, sodom based, uh, bestiality, or sexual intercourse within a prohibited degree of relationship may be charged with being an accomplice or accessory to the commission of the crime concerned of the kidnapping or unlawful detention or both. You know, things have changed in Zimbabwe, the laws now, you cannot have, um, you know, sexual intercourse with anybody below 18 years old. And I, that one I'm going to clap in, I'm like, oh, the government tried. Mm -hmm. They tried. Because we are sick and tired of seeing young kids being pregnant, young kids in town. <laughs> they can't even finish school. Also, that church, that, that church, the one, when my gummies, the white, my mother's, we call it, we are my the, the church, my pastor, that to marry kids, they must go to prison. It's time, I think maximum 10 years, if, you know, depending on your situation. 10 years, minimum, if I'm not mistaken. You can go to prison. Talk to your families in the rural area, especially when if you check when Okana Kumako Kuma prisons, okay, I've been there. And you check most people that are there for rape cases are always people in the rural area because they are not educated enough. Please talk to your family members. Educate them when laws change, let them know. So that they are aware. If they do anything wrong, at least you've told them that this is wrong. It's no longer allowed. Eight years, anybody who play with kids, you're in trouble. And I love that. You can see Charumbira is in trouble. It's, 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 it, that's a shameful legacy of a man who does not have boundaries. Doesn't respect himself. That's Charumbira. He didn't know where to draw the line. You want to be a leader? It comes with a course. Leadership must have discipline. If you fail to have discipline, you will be humiliated. That's where we are now with Mr. Now, let's move on. Corruption. Ha! Huh. You know, did you see the pictures that were circulating about Mbuzi? You know Mbuzi? That, <laughs> you know that, that Mbuzi? That Mbuzi thing. The money from Mbuzi was looted. <laughs> the money is gone. So... This is standard. And was Zimbabwe independent. He said Mbuzi interchange fund looted. Maria Kabiwa. Maria Enda. Maria Enda. Maria Enda. Maria Enda. <laughs> the last time I checked, they were claiming that they've spent 188 million thus far US dollars. I said 188 million US dollars invested in booth thus far <laughs> these are trillions in runs for those people that have seen pictures circulating does that look like something that they spent trillions of runs in fixing or you know millions of us dollars fixing like that remember i was when i, when I jeff and talking about you roam around back and forth you remember that time and they were like the, well i'm like saying jeff and when did he do real estate or you know but they were there with helmets and they were like, and they're controlling this stuff. And I'm like, ha, ha. okay, you know, here we are today. So, you know, hope will always have something to say. Corruption is a pandemic in, in Zimbabwe. And that's one of the real cause of our suffering. Because not only people do they loot. Remember, when they loot, they have to protect the loot. How do they protect the loot? By make sure that they keep you at ransom. If you speak, you're gone. That's how they work. Thanks. And killings. It's thugs, it's either they're going to kill, because that's what they do. You mustn't say a word. It's a pandemic. Corruption is one of the pandemic that God help me. I said, every person who have dipped their hands in the jar of corruption should not live before they pay hair. You, you don't have to die. Sirs and ma'ams, you know, you know yourself. You have dipped your hands in the jar of corruption. You are not going to live until you pay. Sir and ma'ams, you brothers and sisters, we know you. They, and you know yourself, yeah. That you dig your you dig your hands in the in the jar of corruption. Your time is coming. It's coming. It is coming. And when it comes, we'll be here talking about it. And we're going to be telling you. That's what we said. That anything that you do, it comes with a cost. You can't escape. 
If you escape, but your children won't escape. They will pay for the sins of their fathers. Now, Hopo Chingoni said in Zimbabwe, infrastructure projects are used to loot public funds by the ruling ZANPF elites using their business surrogates, uh, oligarchs, and also corrupt government uh, bureaucrats. Two years ago, I reported about how the Mbuzi interchange project was used as a looting tool by inflation, the cost of the interchange. The true cost of building the Mbuzi interchange is US dollar 42 million. Can you hear this? Huh? So the cost was actually 42 million US dollars. The deal was given to force you constructing a company linked to ZANPF oligarch, Kudata Gure. Okay, let me drink water for now. The pastor. I said the pastor for SDA Church. <laughs> the pastor was saying, I hear God speak to me. Don't, don't. Not, not anymore, please. We've had enough for politicians. <laughs> not anymore. So the cost was then inflated to 88 million, and the deal was made into a loan from fossil mines to the Zimbabwean government. So it's all being broken down here. A government gazette note was published saying that the regime had borrowed 88 million for, for the Mbuzi interchange. Has borrowed? Borrowed? Yo, if we have to borrow, Okay, guys, okay, first of all, happy favorite proceed. Was it necessary for us to borrow money to fix Mbuzi interchange, considering that we don't even have the roads? Because that is more to me. It's like if only one that interchange is more like modernizing something, correct? Guys, how long we've been dealing with that Mbuzi for decades and people are still driving their cars there? Eh? Can that be considered a priority, in my opinion? Can that be considered a priority, Mbuzi? In your opinion, guys, tell me. In the comment section do you think that is a priority for us to actually looking for modern stuff if we don't even have the roads at all because we don't actually even have the roads you know and we're talking about what was the purpose of having that interchange because it's not a priority hospitals don't even have drugs here we don't have ambulances this isn't important at all do you even hmm, this is quite interesting so, but finance minister Mtulimna also published in his budget then that the government of Zimbabwe was allocating money to build boots interchange from the IMF special drawing rights. Okay, now it's getting very worse. Okay, so the government of Zimbabwe was allocating money, but also there was money that was borrowed, which was 88 million from boots interchange, and then there was money that was allocated. Okay, so this is nowhere here. And then so the project was allocated money twice. Ah, Money twice, a loan in the IMF drawing rights. This is an PF specialty when looting public funds from councils to the treasury. Yo, this is scary. This is even getting even worse. Europe's biggest interchange in spaghetti junction in England co um, called Gravel Hill costs 140 million US dollars at two days rates. And it, it has 117 kilometers of road on it. The boots interchange in Aurora has 8 kilometers of road, yet it's still costing 11 times more or 22 times more if you factor the double invoice. Okay. The ruling ZPF regime amplifies its propaganda around this infra infrastructure project because the citizens n have never been told about the catastrophic looting of public funds using these projects. Transparency and accountability are important aspects to limit or stop corruption in such projects to ensure the efficient use of resources. But this has never been the cause, uh, sort of the case under ZANPF. The involvement of business figures linked to the ruling party raises concerns about fair practices and the in issuance of tenders which reflect the true cost. This has been made worse by the fact that the opposition is no shadow ministers who should have been making noise and informing us about this massive theft of your public funds that is taking place as a report by the Zimbabwean Independent. A strong opposition with the vigilant shadow ministers plays a vital role in highlighting and addressing such, such issues. It is essential for, Zim, for citizens to be informed and engaged in, in holding their government accountable for the responsible use of public funds without which we suffer collectively as a country. 
um, ask your members of parliament this question. What is happening with the Mpuzi interchange and why are you not taking, a, why are you not talking about it in parliament? Meanwhile, money meant for hospitals, schools and cleaning. Um, so in cleaning, drinking water is diverted through these dodgy inflated tenders. And this is quite heartbreaking. Yo, yo, yo. It's, yo, it's, it's sad. It's shocking. Like, it is, it, it, it is shocking. You, the last time I checked, there was, uh, there was a report uh, that they'd invested about 188 million US dollars thus far. So if they borrowed 88 million, which was the court to fix that interchange, the booth interchange, and then they also reported that 188 million was invested. It's even, it's becoming more confusing. And also the allegation that the other money was borrowed and then the other man also was allocated, which means it was double payment. And what about this 188 million? And by the way, we still don't have an either change. It's not, it's not finished yet. It's not, <laughs> we don't have it yet. Both the interchange fund looted. The man is gone. This is Zimbabwe independent reporting. It is getting worse, but they, but this guy called Edmund Kuzai, he seems to be working, with, you know, with uh, with, with Zon PF. I know he he does quite a lot of rebutting there. He said the article lacks concrete examples or or detailed analysis. For ins for instance, no specific property is cited to in illustrate the alleged evaluation inflation, such as a property valued at fifty thousand being appraised at, for example, ninety thousand. Questions remain regarding the uh, possibility of uh, securing a valuation signature. Stupid enough to advance such a scheme. Let's see, perhaps more details will follow. And by the way, people are asking questions today. Do you remember the air ambulances? You remember the air ambulances? Those yellow ones. You do you remember them? Quote unquote, that came towards elections with the Russians who came in town and, you know, and the president actually, you know, do you remember the air ambulances? Anyone who have a relative that once been lifted from, airlifted to the hospital? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, so today people are asking questions on Twitter. And then George Charamba said, you guys are foolish. We, you, you don't know that we don't have pilots. I'm like, huh? Who buys a car when you don't have a driver? Jesus Christ. Get the license first and you can buy a car. Or hire a driver. So he says, you guys don't even know that we don't even have uh, pilots for to fly you into the hospital. <laughs> Let's pray for the country. All I'm saying is we must pray for each other, for the strength to move forward, because we need to, we, need, we all need prayers. You and I, we need prayers. Let's pray for each other. Because our brothers are going haywire, you know, they don't care anymore. People are selfish. They are, like I told you, it's a syndicate of liars and manipulators. And, you know, they are like, they are cow, like cows. Of, uh, the way they behave don't make no sense. They have no feelings anymore. They don't care about how people feel. They just care about what they're getting. How you feel, they absolutely don't care. The money that are being spoken here, are you surprised where we have this Sengesu saga? And after all the people said, listen, if you are wise, this is simply wasting people's time. You said this Sengesu saga is simply hijacking your brain so you focus on nonsense than to really question real issues that are going down in town. Like this issue of monies that are being looted. And you're going to talk about Sengezo. You are going to shift your mind on stupidity. But the money is moving out of the country. It's gone. But. But. It's simply a matter of time. Very soon. Something will give. Something will eventually give. Something will give. Now. Because I don't want to get much involved in the issue of, uh, of, uh, of uh, TB Joshua, because I'll deal with that one the other time. But I want to talk about what you bet angels said, threatening people. <laughs> threatening people. I want you to take a listen, because I know they church people right here. You are here, and take a listen to what you bet angels said, threatening people. Threatening people. Take a listen, please. So, so listen. Don't say you've not been warned. I know what I'm talking about. The Lord visited me and told me a lot of things that I'm going to tell you today. 
People don't know they wake up today and there is a documentary about this man, oh, he did this, oh, he did this. Is there something happening behind the scenes before I start on this man? Whether you don't like a Nigerian preacher or you don't like a Namibian preacher, a Zambian preacher, a Zimbabwean preacher, an American preacher, what is really taking place? Did these people just wake up and go like, we are got to do something here? The investigation might actually be brilliant and true. The motivation for it might be demonic and diabolic. Hear what God told me. He told me, warn the people and warn every Christian, especially in Africa. We have started to move in a mighty way in the apostolic, in the prophetic, in teaching, in evangelism, in pastoral duties. I have moved in a mighty way. And I'm about to review a new level. That so listen, don't say you. All right, first and foremost, um, there have been a lot, a lot of documentaries about a lot of things in the world. A lot. As a matter of fact, BBC didn't only start with this. They've spoken about a lot of people. There was another white preacher that was also a liar before. That white preacher, how he used to operate. Remember, the, all these cultic things started with those people out there. This guy used to, used to be connected to his wife in the church. Okay, I will, I will drop those videos so you guys can see them. So you have a small little, you know, silver thing in his ears. So what the wife would do is the wife would stand at the gate and take people's information, you know. And then what the wife does is that then there, is, there was a, this transmitter that they would communicate. The wife and the husband, the husband was a white, pro, call himself, quote unquote, a prophet, deceiving people. So the wife will be speaking and the husband will hear and say, if he can say, oh, so that's calling Rumbi. And he, you know, you say, hear him, Rumbi, because it's only him and the wife that could hear. Rumbi, Rumbi, then he keeps on calling Rumbi in the congregation. These people, <laughs> you know, the devil is a liar, I swear. You know, everything that God does, the enemy perverts. The devil is a mass illusionist. It's known that anything that God does, the enemy perverts. God heals, it's known. But because this generation is desperate for signs, I've told you last time, what miracle are you looking for that can pass the fact that you were actually born? You know, that you, the woman that you see me right now, wherever you are, I don't even know where you are, some of you. But here, you can hear me now. Is this not a miracle? What miracle are you looking for? <laughs> there are miracles every day in your life, waking up alive. It's a miracle. But people are always in search of signs. That's why they are being deceived. But I, I'm focusing on him threatening people. So no, if you say wrong, don't say it. So fake prophets, fake prophets and thugs, politicians, thugs, same WhatsApp group. It's a syndicate. It's so linked because remember, it's all about the minds. It's manipulation. They will loot and come back around you like what Chibayo does. And they start giving you cars from the church. <laughs> Cramps. Give you small, small, small Toyota. Oh, you put a sicker. Woo. It's manipulation. That's what it's called. The man they've looted was supposed to feed the poor. Every Zimbabwean could be afford to buy a car. Today, a lot of people don't own cars. But they should be owning cars. There's no reason why they should, cannot own a car. It's manipulation. They're threatening you, intimidating you. It's a syndicate of liars and thugs. Check what happened to the God Mafia. You saw the prophet, that man who's intimidating people, was on God Mafia. Forget about him. His friend, that you call, what is, what is the name of that Indian guy that was saying, praise God, praise God. That looted Kenya and it on its knees, praise God. They use the name of the Lord deceiving people while they are looting. It's a syndicate of thieves. Get this from me. They know it's cowed. They are connected. That's why they are friends. You can see them everywhere, their bodies. In 2024, you're going to be sober and vigilant. People can play you dirty. You need to be smart. The bottom line is that if there's something wrong, it must be spoken about. People can't be told to say, keep quiet. BBC did not only start with TB Joshua. They've been doing it for years. So many people have been exposed because these people have got real deal, you know, stuff to, to investigate you. In Africa, you get intimidated. If you speak out, you, they want to kill you. They intimidate you. 
That's a problem. That's why they are now working with people that are out there to make sure that they expose you. Guys, you haven't seen anything yet. You still have to see many people, even in Zimbabwe, the fake prophets are going to be exposed. The time will come when the truth will surface. Things are not going to slide here. Truth will eventually surface in the country, whether they like it or not. People will know who they were and who they are. But intimidating is so you don't speak don't speak truth at power. I will tell you, no, God spoke to me. Hold on. God is speaking to everybody every day. We are all children of God. He's speaking to everybody, including a drunkard. God is speaking to them. He did. He spoke to people that were killing before. People like Paul, when it was his soul, was killing people and God spoke to him. A murderer. He speaks to everybody. No one is special than the other. Stop being fooled by these people. No one is better than the other. God speaks to everybody. You waking up and go to work and come back sometimes when you want to do something, you can feel in your spirit it's not the right time. It's God speaking to you. That intuition you're talking about is God speaking. So don't let people fool you like they are special. They've got a special hotline that gets to heaven. Nobody has a special hotline that can reach heavens. We are all the same. Don't be fooled. A relationship with your father doesn't need anybody to be a special person in town. Nobody has to be better than the other. These people are thieves. That's how they operate. You have to be wise, to be sober, and be vigilant. Don't be fooled. He must not, Hubert Angel should not even say that. He must just even keep quiet. No threatening people because people are talking truth to power. If a person did wrong, there's a difference between T.B. Joshua as a man, remember, a man, and a man, a man of God. You are a human being. You are bound to make mistakes, notwithstanding the office you hold. There were men that was going to speak to God every day. David, David, David. God said he's a man after my own heart. He took the wife of Uriah. David. But God still says me men after my own heart. But he had to expose himself in the Bible. I took someone's wife. But these ones, they can do all the dirty games, but nobody should talk about it. And I'm going to ask you, are you truly a man of God? Because a man of God should own his problems. If you do something wrong, own it and fix it. But stop threatening the church and threatening people. No, don't talk about it. No. David did. Solomon had 700 wives, went after women, 400 concubines. He was, he, had, he was a womanizer, but he spoke about it. He owned his stuff. He owned his story. But these ones, they're always perfect. Nobody must talk about them. Oh, you're going to die. Oh, God says, touch not the anointed. Stop, 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 stop right there. Touch not the anointed. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We are all anointed. <laughs> We're all in formation. We are all anointed. All of us, we are anointed. Cleaners are anointed to clean. Teachers are anointed to teach. Doctors are anointed to even operate people. It's an anointing. It's empowerment. But they will come and try to confuse the church. Do not be fooled by this. They can say whatever they want to say. Because you know why? They've known that they're exposed. So it's shame. It's embarrassing. Now they can't do their tricks anymore because people are wiser. People are sober. They're not going to be watching. When you get by the door, you're like, I'm not going to give you my information. Now they don't know who they're going to deceive anymore because truth is being exposed. That's why. They're busy screaming. Did you see only fake prophets are busy screaming? Did you hear all the pastors saying anything? No. True men of God are not saying a word. Only fake prophets are busy. What? Every day they are taking out a video because they're trying to intimidate people. Do not be fooled. Keep your eyes. If you want to go to church, keep your eyes on God. The rest, read your Bible. Keep your eyes on God. Whether a man calls him a pastor, bishop, whatever he wants to call himself, it has nothing to do with you. You're not the one that called him. He must go back to the one that called him and report if he wants to. But at the end of the day, he's not better than anyone else. They are all just human beings like you and me. The other two, no, no, I'm anointed. No, everybody's anointed. We are all anointed, as a matter of fact. We are all anointed. Just because we don't have titles, because we don't want them. I don't even want a title, but we are anointed. Isn't it? We are anointed. What I'm doing right now is an anointing. I can't do it here without the anointing. So what, what is anointing? It's because they know that if they say, oh, yeah, I'm anointed, people are going to say, oh, my God, he's, he's a man of God. No, your works. Your works. Your bad angel is there on Facebook right now. Every town that he went is on Facebook. He's a beer. Expose him on Facebook that every sip that he goes, he can have 20 girls in town. 
This man, but he'll tell you, oh, God, you've spoken. Ah, hold on, hold on, hold on. The Bible says you shall know them by their works, by their fruits, how they live their lives. What we monitor, not what you say, how you live your life is what makes you a true man of God or a liar. Don't be fooled. They're trying to silence you to speak truth to power. Speak. If they do wrong, tell them it's wrong. I love you as a brother, but you've crossed the line. God doesn't like it. God is a daddy. He doesn't like you to be disrespectful. He doesn't like you to deceive the church. If you want to be a leader, you lead by example. What you preach is what you leave. I can't come here and start teaching you things that I don't leave. I'm wrong. If I've got my weakness, I must own them and say, you know what, yeah, I'm, I'm struggling in this area. Please forgive me. I'm struggling. But I can't come here and make myself a saint, but when I'm living a different lifestyle. No, it doesn't work like that. We shall know you if you're a man of God by your works. T.B. Joshua was exposed by his own daughter. Biological daughter. And someone else who is in Zimbabwe or who is in South Africa or who is in Congo can start fighting for the men. His own daughter. <laughs> She knows her father. And someone else of the we don't, we don't, we don't even know where they sleep. Can you stand and be fighting and be screaming? Shut up. Keep quiet. You may love him, but don't confuse God and him because your love should be channeled to God, not to a human being. God says, I'm a jealous God. I am a jealous God. He wants you to love him, not a person. You will respect people and understand that when they make mistakes, it's okay because they're human. Emotional intelligence, what we lack, especially in Africa, we fall in love with people, then we throw off our minds in the bin. Look how they operate, it's intimidation. Politicians do the same, very interlocking. In, politicians do the same, manipulation, lying to people, deceiving people. Same WhatsApp group, because that's how they work. It's a syndicate of wickedness, of evil, of men and women who don't fear God. And they keep on looting, lying, deceiving people, manipulating people, intimidating people. They're the same. Oh, you can hear him. He's already intimidated. A church. How do you intimidate people in the church? That because they've spoken truth to power. How do you do that? But because that's who they are. They thrive on intimidation. They thrive on lying, deception. They thrive on looting. You saw them everywhere. They're everywhere. God mafia. You, you, you saw it with your two eyes. <laughs> And they can come because, oh, God has spoken to me. If you say that, you're going to die. Excuse me. <laughs> you are God. You are not a God. Sit down. Sit down and keep quiet. <laughs> keep quiet. May God bless you and may God bless Zimbabwe. I love you so much, y'all. Thank you so much for coming through. I appreciate you deeply. I'll see you tomorrow. Please sleep tight. And remember, I have so much mega love for you guys. Bless you all. And bye for now. Oh. Uh